right, we're ready for another tech talk. This one's going to be on tire pressure monitoring and how to get the system ready for your first drive. There's a lot of empty seats up here with a lot of nice shirts sitting there. So anybody around that wants to take a seat, take a load off, come on in, have a seat. It's only going to take a few minutes. It's going to be a real worthwhile talk too. Learn something good. Come on in, have a seat, get comfy. Yeah, up front, up front. <laughs> you guys are way too shy. All right, so what I want to cover today is the uh, ACOM portion on how to get your tire pressure monitoring system ready for the road the first time. Uh, this is quite an important topic to cover because it actually applies to the dealer level, it applies to individual owner operators, and it even applies to factory technicians. What you see here on my first slide is a readiness checklist. This checklist has some very important content that you as the operator, the driver, if you have a tire pressure monitoring system by Bendix equipped, should be aware of. This list will basically determine from the start what your major parameters are and what they should be set at in the system. If you don't know them as an operator, that may be okay, but your fleet maintenance tech should definitely be aware of those settings. So should your dealer be when they take delivery of the truck for the first time and are getting ready to uh, ship it out the door for the first initial drive. We're going to take a look at a few of these settings and then I'm going to dive into what it actually looks like in our di diagnostic software. It's called ACOM 6.7. It is available for free on the Bendix website at www.bendix.com. So, Let's have a look here at these settings. I'm going to go through, slowly through them. Some are pertinent to what happens in the software. Some are just for your general information. There are slots for the VIN number, the customer, obviously. But the real important ones, as far as tire pressure monitoring goes, are, for instance, what is the cold inflation pressure on your steer axle? And what is the cold inflation pressure on your drive axles? Could be one or could be more. Uh, those two numbers are quite critical because from factory, what happens to a lot of trucks that get delivered to the customer base, uh, the system will have default parameters. And those default parameters for the pressures that are run in the tires on the steer and the drive aren't always the pressures that the customer eventually runs in the field. So if you're not even going to change them, it is worthwhile knowing where they are and to double check them. Are the values correct? So you would consult your dealer um, or the dealer would check with the factory what they are uh, programmed at initially and have that written down. There's a few additional settings we'll get into later, such as uh, whether or not you're running a trailer that's also equipped with a tire pressure monitoring system and what type of learn mode you would like the system to apply. In addition to that, on this side of the form, we also have whether or not you want temperature compensation enabled. This is a, a topic that we could talk about um, separately, but in a nutshell, it lets the system know whether or not you want to take a look at tire pressures and related alerts in relation to the temperature of the air contained in the tire. So as we all know, once a tire gets rolling down the road, um, it will actually heat up and that will increase the pressure in that tire. With this setting, you're letting the system know to take all of the alerts and the pressure readings into account also using and considering the temperature of the air. Uh, moving down here, we have a few extra compensation levels, and we'll dive into those shortly. Now, this form, again, it could be in many shapes and sizes. This is really just for you to have that data recorded if you're at the dealer level, to be able to give that to your customer and say, look, these are the settings for your truck. This is what you need to be aware of. When it comes to actually hooking up to ACOM uh, 6.7, you'll need two simple diagnostic methods. Uh, one obviously being your data link adapter. It's a box much like this. It could be made by Nexic. Uh, this particular model here is made by Norgon. It's your standard RP1210 uh, 1939 adapter. And of course the connecting cable because you want to be able to connect to the J1939 diagnostic port. Uh, with this box and connecting cables you would hook up to your laptop that then runs ACOM 6.7 or newer. Once you start up ACOM, you'll be presented with a selection list of all the different Bendix devices that are currently installed on that truck. And you want to make sure that you select the TPMS CAN enabled function. Once you've selected that item on the list, that's the initial startup list in ACOM, 
all you have to do is start with ECU. And that'll bring me to my second slide. This will usually take a few moments within ACOM. At that point, the software will communicate through the data link adapter to the truck directly. It'll find which TPMS system is installed. It will download all the settings and present you with the next screen. And we see that here at the top. And I'm going to take you through the ABCs of making sure that your settings are correct for what your truck is actually driving as far as the pressures and tire settings are concerned. So in this basic diagram on the first screen, you will see how many axles are currently on the vehicle. And again, this is just for demo purposes, so we have a few extra wheels as well. And just below it, where the B letter is, we see what cold inflation pressure is set for each of those axles. This is our first very critical item to double check and potentially correct from a dealership level or a factory level. So as I said here earlier on in the note, you would have that information already collected before you go into the software. And a basic example would be the truck is delivered to you from factory through the dealer and you're made aware that the tires are run at 120 PSI across all axles. Because for example, that is the basic setting the factory put in place. They don't know what you're eventually going to run, so they just put everything at 120 PSI. You would see 120, 120, 120 in that example. However, you now as the customer, you've uh, specified the truck a certain way, you're running a particular brand of tires and a particular load, you now want to change that setting and actually run 100 PSI physically in all of those um, tires on your truck. So all you have to do is simply click on the box, type in the new number, which is representative of your cold inflation pressure that you're physically running in your tires. That cold inflation pressure would be denoted on your placard that comes with the truck. It's that little door jam table when you open the driver's side door. There's a, a little table in there. You can read it there. It might also be in your load inflation table book um, that you can look up for your vehicle um, or the manufacturer's recommended setting. However, that number should not come from the side of the tire. The CIP rating that's printed on the side profile of the tire is merely a maximum inflatable value. That's not the number you would normally put in here. It's very important to remember that. Once the numbers are entered into the axles, and you'll also see whether or not the number of axles and tires that are programmed in conform to your vehicle, all you have to do is write to ECU. It's another important step. Until you press the write to ECU button, it will not commit your changes from the software through the DLA adapter onto the vehicle. Okay? If you forget that, and you move to a different screen, the software will kindly remind you that you've made changes which you haven't saved yet. So very easy to follow. So that was the first step, determining what your actual cold inflation pressure is, opening the software to check it, and potentially having to change it. This change will prevent the driver from being presented with a lot of false alerts that can happen due to the fact that a wrong cold inflation pressure was initially entered. In my initial example, let's say the factory uh, pressures were 120 PSI, but physically the vehicle is set up to run at 100 PSI on all the tires. What that would show you on the screen, on your dash display for the TPMS system, is an actual 20 pound uh, differential, a 20 pound incorrect pressure setting for all your tires. And that could be a big problem because it's not a real alert. That is just something that happens because you're running a different pressure than what the vehicle was set up to be. Moving then to the second screen, in order to get there, all we have to do is press the triangle button at the top. This is our little triangle settings shortcut. That will bring you to the internal settings for the TPMS system as far as the alert percentages go and whether or not you want temperature compensation and the various learn modes. So let's talk about that just a little bit here. This is the final step in approving that your system is ready for the first drive. We see three different windows here initially, and the first two slots allow you to set the percentage rating for your first and your second level pressure alert. Your first pressure alert is more of a minor pressure alert. It is more of a maintenance reminder that you're starting to slowly lose air out of your tires. You should probably look after that at some point. It can be set up to work both for over and under pressure of your tires. In our default example, that percentage is set to 15% in under inflation. In other words, my total air pressure, be it in my example 100 PSI, I could lose up to 15% or 15 PSI 
before this first initial alert value comes on. Again, from a dealer perspective, this is an important value to report to your customer because they may want larger or smaller percentage of amounts because this will ultimately determine how soon the warnings come on in the system. So in this example, 15% is a very reasonable number for that first alert. It's not going to come on too often, but when it does, it's definitely time to air up the tires somewhat. And just below that, we have a check mark. You can see it here slightly in the graphic. With that check mark set on, the check is in the box, it will tell the system that you want the first alert temperature compensated. That simply means that for this percentage, I want to take into account the rise and fall in temperature as the tire heats up and cools down while I'm driving. That makes that first alert much more dynamic. It makes it quicker to react. And the alert levels will rise and fall in accordance with the rise in temperature as that tire rolls down the highway and, and heats up. You can do the same temperature compensation for the second level alert. However, it is not necessary because the second level alert is a much higher percentage usually. We go there to 20 or 25% deflation. When that alert comes on, that is a severe underinflation alert, letting the driver know it is time to pull over. If they were to continue on driving with that underinflation, it could cause severe damage to the tire and they might actually uh, lose the tire or do such damage that it has to be replaced. We want to prevent that, of course. So that second percentage is usually 20%, again, a reasonable amount, but enough that um, this would be cause for a stoppage at the side of the road or getting to the next service station as soon as possible. From factory, again, you want to make sure that at least these two levels are set at reasonable values. It may be that they're set too tight. For instance, a 5% rating on the first alert and 10% on the second alert is far too tight. It will annoy you as a customer, as a driver, with endless amounts of alerts because you always have some variation in how well your tires are aired up. So you want to avoid that. Make them large. On the flip side of it, you don't want to have a 30 or 40% deflation in there because then it really makes the system useless. You would lose so much air that you've already done far too much damage to the tire before the first alert even comes on. So these two are very worthwhile checking. The third and final setting, also equally important, is the high temperature number. Now, this is a separate number the user can set. We normally recommend 185 Fahrenheit. That is the temperature of the contained air in the tire at that time. If for a regular commercial truck tire, the air were to reach that type of temperature, um, you certainly have a problem. It could be caused by a dragging brake. Um, it could be caused by chronic underinflation that will just heat that tire to much higher degrees than you would normally operate on. So setting that at 185 will still give you a reasonable amount of time to pull over to the side of the road, let that tire cool down, and prevent thermal damage, long-term thermal damage. Again, you want to check that to make sure it's not an unreasonably high amount. Um, we definitely recommend staying below 200 Fahrenheit for this. But you also want to make sure it's not set as low as, say, 140 or 120 Fahrenheit. For heavy loads, fast driving with lots of turning and braking, you can easily get into temperatures of 135 to 140 Fahrenheit naturally. So again, we don't want the customer being bothered with unnecessary alerts. So those are the three main values we want to make sure we check as the system gets readied for the first drive. Whether you're a dealer or an operator or even a factory technician setting it up for the very first time. Uh, lastly, on our list here, we have a few additional settings concerning the learn modes. And again, those can stay with the Bendix recommended defaults. Unless you have a particular desire to have the system learn new sensors automatically, you can set that. Uh, we again want to make sure that every box has a valid setting before we write to ECU. That is again our last most important step. Writing to ECU will commit all your changes, which will be highlighted in yellow through the DLA onto the ECU on the vehicle. If you don't do that and you try to exit the software, again, it'll give you a kind reminder to make sure you save your changes. That wraps up the uh, quick overview on what settings to pay attention to before you drive to avoid unnecessary alerts and uh, also have the system make sense for you, that it alerts you early enough so that you can save your tire and not have to worry about having an unexpected blowout or um, additional heat damage. That's it in a nutshell. So just make sure what your facts are, 
check them with Acom. It's available for free on the Bendix website, bendix.com. Should be version 6.7 or higher, and it'll give you full access to these settings. Any questions? No? All good? <laughs> Very good? No? No questions? That's it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.